What's up Star Wars fans, today I want to talk to you about new Star Wars Rebels stories. That's right, back on March 5th, 2018, we got the last episode of Season 4 of Star Wars Rebels. But today on August 16th, 2022, we have some great new Star Wars Rebels stories that you probably haven't seen. Now unfortunately, you're not going to be able to watch these new stories on Disney+, Plus, but you will be able to view their amazing art and great stories that stick to the characters that we know and love from Star Wars Rebels, and today of course I'm talking about the compilation of comics that is simply known as Star Wars Rebels. But get this, it's not just a few stories, there's 43 in total, and they're all rarely seen comics. Some of these were published in the old Star Wars Rebels magazine that was very hard to come by, as well as the Star Wars Rebels animation magazine. So let's talk about some of the reasons that this is a must buy if you are a Star Wars Rebels fan. First of all, the artwork is absolutely on point, is very similar to what we see in Star Wars Rebels, and this art direction and style is the same throughout the 43 stories. Something else that I really enjoy about these Star Wars Rebels stories is that just like the Star Wars animation series, we get stories that focus on individual characters or duos of characters, and of course lots of stories that include all the ghost crew. But what is most important to me about these comics is that they try and have that same substance that Star Wars Rebels have. Even though Star Wars Rebels is an animation series, it still has many of the themes and ideas that come with Star Wars. And the same is absolutely true for this collection of Star Wars Rebels comics. For example, in one of the comic stories, they explore what it means to be a Jedi in the story titled The Fake Jedi. I believe it's a great little story about hope and the Jedi's important role when it comes to giving others hope. There is also another great story that is solely based on Sabine Wren's good friend, the bounty hunter Ketsu. This story takes place after Sabine and Ketsu reunite in Star Wars Rebels, and it shows the positive impact that Sabine Wren has had on Ketsu, and how she's slowly trying to become more of a positive force for change in the galaxy, instead of making bad choices based in fear that lead her down a darker path in the dark side. So again, in many of the stories, the essence of Star Wars is there, the themes and ideas presented in the Star Wars movies and in Star Wars shows like Star Wars Rebels are also present in these comics. That said, it should also be said that there's over 500 pages of comics here and that many of them, like the Ketsu story I just mentioned, only include characters that we've met in Star Wars Rebels, but sometimes not the actual ghost crew that we know and love. Stories like Sons of the Sky, which really don't include our Star Wars characters much, but tell a story about Imperial pilots versus rebel pilots, or a story that solely follows the adventures of Lando Calrissian and his puffer pig. Trust me, that story might sound boring, but it is quite the adventure. There's also another story that sees the return of Iron Squadron, the group of young rebels that piloted Sato's Hammer, the YT-2400 we see in Season 2 of Star Wars Rebels. And if you're a fan of Agent Callus, we get a story with just him that gives us some more insight into who Callus is and gives us some more background on the character. But something else I really like about these comics is that they actually have some recurring characters. For example, the characters of Mizell and Rian are both introduced in their own stories and then come together with Ezra Bridger in a later story where the three young characters go off on their own adventure. There's also the fact that Lando Calrissian shows up in about four out of these 43 stories and there are just tons of other characters that show up in these comics like Ahsoka Tano, Captain Rex, Commander Sato, the Inquisitors, Vazago, and many more. And it's great to see these returning characters, of course, but we're also introduced to new characters, and sometimes these are characters that our Star Wars Rebels crew know and help develop the background of those characters, albeit usually in a small way. Now, being a huge Star Wars Rebels fan, there's not a lot for me to critique here, but I do, of course, have a few complaints, one of which is that Ahsoka Tano is only in one of these stories. And that is no doubt down to the fact that Dave Filoni is so protective of that character, so I guess in the end we're lucky that we even got that one story. There is also the fact that the dialogue isn't perfect, it isn't written by Dave Filoni, and sometimes the characters say things in a way or using words that they probably wouldn't in the actual series. I certainly wouldn't say it's every story, but it certainly does happen. And last but not least, the comic here in Canada is on sale for $40, and I thought that was a little steep until I realized that's less 
less than a dollar a story. Not to mention if you're in the US on Amazon.com, you can pick this up for $26.99 as it's 10% off at the moment. If you'd like, you can pick up the Star Wars Rebels comic. I'll have a link in the description as well as in the comments. But hey, Star Wars fans, let me know about this comic. Are you going to pick it up? Do you think it's an interesting addition to the series? And as always, I'm Mike, and remember, the Force will be with you always.